the Excel indirect formula is one of those weird sounding Excel formula, but it's actually incredibly powerful. Just this afternoon, I found an application for it that saved me lots of time. I'm gonna show you that in this video, get you using the indirect formula. Let's get straight into the download file. Now I've got a list of names here and four other sheets in the file. I want to know how many times do each of these names appear on each of these sheets. So fairly straightforward thing to do and I did it using a countif formula. And we're gonna build that up now, so make sure you're working along with me. I'm gonna say countif the range, so I'm gonna to go to the TX customer sheet, select the range, comma, back to the data sheet, the criteria, so what do we want to look for? And that's just gonna be the customer name here. Now this in itself was working absolutely fine, but it was quite labor intensive putting that formula together. I had to switch between sheets. I've got multiple sheets in this file. I've got four sheets. I don't wanna to have to go through that process four times. Might there be a way of implementing this formula without having to change sheets like that? Could I just write the sheet names at the top in the column headers and could we somehow link those into the formula? Yes, we can. You guessed it. Yes, we can using the indirect formula, but it is quite tricky to get working. Let's go through it step by step. So how is indirect gonna help us? Well, it's gonna allow us to express this component of the formula as a text string. And that means we can manipulate it and get it pointing to different sheets. So let's get indirect in there. Typing indirect, open and close the brackets at the same time. Now our first job is to type out, this does take a bit of time, is to type out that sheet reference exactly as it would appear uh, in the formula editing bar. And we begin with a speech mark because we're expressing this as a text string. So we have speech marks. So speech marks to begin with, and then we know in the formula editor before the sheet name, we have an inverted comma. So we've got the inverted comma in there. And then we need to say TX customers. That's the sheet name. And then it's another inverted comma. We know this from the formula editing bar. Exclamation mark, that's gonna link us, connect us to the sheet reference, which is B2 to B50 is about right. And then we can close that using the, yeah, that looks about right to me, using the speech mark again. Okay, so if you've missed any of those components, the speech mark, the inverted comma, or the exclamation mark, yours is not gonna work, don't worry, that's absolutely normal with indirect. Mine never work the first time, it's about how well can you debug things. So let's see if we can get this working. And we've got nothing there for Julia Hernandez, gonna just drag this down. So it's saying Alison Brandt appears once on the TX sheet, go into the TX sheet now, I can see Alison Brandt there. And then I'm gonna copy her name. So does she now appear twice? And now she does appear twice. So just a little test there. I'm happy that that's now working. But that in itself is not very interesting, is it? All we've done is write out the sheet name and the reference. That's also a very manual thing to do, but it's gonna get more exciting as we, as we will see. So this sheet reference, rather than writing it in the formula, I want us to point to the cell that contains that sheet reference. So let's try to do that steady and systematic as usual. To do this, we're gonna to have to concatenate, sorry to use a long word, concatenate a number of strings. And this is really tricky. You've gotta just work through it step by step. Okay, so there, difficult to see this. I'm gonna put some spaces in. So there we have two speech marks with an inverted comma in. That's what we need to get started. That's gonna be a small text string. And we're then gonna put the and sign in and connect that, that little text string we just created to the cell reference there. So that gives us the cell reference. Then we need another and sign, which is gonna connect us to the rest of the text string here. Well, it's gonna create a second text string. So this looks super tricky to understand. It was tricky to put together. I've done this video, tried to shoot it about three times because I didn't quite get this right. But this is what we need. And let's just see if it works first. Let's do a bit of testing. Okay, seems to work. I'm gonna drag it up 
and then okay we've got a problem here right yeah so this is something that we have to deal with so when we uh, take this formula down we can see that we have errors here so why are we getting those errors well we need to put a a this is a partial absolute reference to fix that row reference on row two so i've just put the cursor in here uh, hitting the f4 key on the windows pc this will fix that reference to row two okay so i can cop i can just drag this down now and drag it up so we've managed to get rid of those errors hooray and then okay so julia hernandez is not on the sheet to test this I'm just going to copy Julia Hernandez in here and then what can we see? Yes, we've got a one there. So I'm pretty happy uh, that formula is working, but I hope you didn't miss the magic in all of that detail focused stuff. The magic has happened there. We are now referencing this cell here. That's giving us the sheet name. So we've got a sheet name in a cell working in a formula that could be a game changer for you it was a game changer for me this afternoon when i was stuck with a long piece of work it saved me a huge amount of time okay so let's try to complete this piece of work let's pull this formula across to nyc now can anybody see the problem that's going to happen when we pull this formula across you might want to stop the video and think about that well when we pull the formula down remember we had a problem with this reference here creating some errors when we pull the formula across we've got to make sure that this reference here that's looking at the customer name there this reference here also needs a partial absolute reference this time fixing the column which means no matter how far we go across we're still going to look at the same column so i've got a partial absolute reference there i'm going to um, just auto fill down and then drag across and it's telling me julia appears once on the nyc sheet i'm going to go to the nyc sheet i can see julia at the top there put julia in again and does she now appear twice and she now appears twice so we're testing as we go along and then let's just bring this down auto fill down you can double click of course what do we need to do to complete this task well we've got two more sheets here az customers and mo customers so i'm just going to copy these headers across and then amend them so let's have az first az az uppercase customers and we've got mo customers at the end here so i'm just looking at the sheet names now and then we should be able to take these formula across and then auto fill down double click i'll just i'm just going to drag down here there we go okay so we can check yes just hitting the f2 key here are those references accurate we've got two partial absolute references and they do seem to be accurate so julia hernandez not currently on the mo sheet so if i just go to the mo sheet here put julia in Control v and then go back i can see she's now on the mo sheet there so that's how to get indirect working for you so it has this game changing capability being able in this case to put a sheet name in a cell get it working with a formula it's going to save you so much time let me know in the comments how you get on i'll see you in another video on the channel